See, it's up almost 4% right now when the overall market is down. On today's episode, we are going to take a look at C Limited. I'm going to explain why this is one of my favorite investments right now. So today's episode is going to be broken down to the following. First, we're going to take a look at some recent news that happened within C after their earnings. I did a video on their earnings uh, about two months ago, um, but these are some articles that have come out after that. We are also going to take a look at some financial numbers for C, a quick look at their future growth and their balance sheet as well. Finally, I'm going to end this video with why I like this stock so much and what are some of the risks that I see it, right? Just because I like the stock does not mean that I'm not trying to find the badness in the stock. I think it's always important to see both the good and the bad in an investment. So like always, if you are new to my channel, if you're a long-term investor, if you like to learn about growth stocks, make sure to hit that subscribe button. To all my returning viewers, thank you so much for the support. Like always, if you ever want to get in contact with me, YouTube comments, Twitter, you can find me on Twitch, you can find me on my free Discord channel, you can find me at Jose Naharo dot com like always everything i say here is just my opinions and none of it should be taken as advice because i am by no means a professional so make sure to talk to a financial advisor before making any financial decisions now that we got that out the way let's get started Like always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up. It helps the small channel out so much. I truly, truly appreciate it. And let me know in the comments right now, are you a C holder? And have you actually been on C when I've been doing all these videos? I talked about C when it was about $80. Then I talked about it again at $100. And I talked about it again in $120. So I've been talking about C for the past six months. So let me know, guys. Have you been, have you been following this journey with me on this stock? This is actually one of my tier one stocks right now in my portfolio. For those that don't know, I have nine tier one per, um, stocks in my portfolio. And these are the ones that hold the biggest percentage ways on my portfolio. And I actually have a playlist. And don't forget below, I do have a Weeball link. And if we you sign up and follow the directions, we both get a free stock. And what's more, what's more amazing than a free stock? All right, so the major reason that C is sitting right now at $163.44, and that's up 3.7%. At its peak for the day, it was actually up almost 5 6%, which was pretty impressive. It reached all the way to $167. Right now, this is still giving a market cap of $76.86 billion. Um, it's still not even a $100 billion company. Um, so the main reason is, so today, UBS Group, which is a, a firm um, that the uh, an analyst firm they started their coverage with C and the first coverage that they gave on it was a buy with a price target of two hundred dollars and you can see this is most recent of October six twenty we can um I don't for me this personally has does not make any changes to my investments I normally don't look at analyst prices I honestly don't even look at any other at many more analysts to, to try to look what they're buying i more look at them just to try to learn why they get into a company but i never buy a recommendation solely based because one person said so all right so let me first start off with a click a quick explanation of what c does to those that this might be your first time learning about the stock like i mentioned i've done plenty of of analysts on this company so feel free to check out my catalog just take a look for c just look for c and you will find all the videos that i have done on it um, so right now, C, like it's a company that works in Southeast Asia. So C right now works in three major sectors and three sectors that I'm very, very, very bullish on. The first sector is what they call their Garena, which is their digital entertainment. This digital entertainment deals with their gaming and they have one game right now that is just dominating the market and that's Fire Force. I, I believe it's called Free Fire Force, I believe. We'll, we'll take a look at it in a bit. Um... But this digital entertainment is a lot of their gaming and social applications that they have. Biggest driver right now is that game that we'll see in a bit. Another thing to mention is the big giant Tencent owns about 30% of C right now. So because of their ownership, they actually license some games to C so they can do use in, in Southeast Asia. For example, Garena right now is licensed to use League of Legends and I forget what other games. There's a few other games because of Tencent's ownership to such huge variety of, of gaming companies. If you guys didn't know, Tencent owns like 50% of Epic Games, it owns Riot Games, it owns X% 5% of Activision and Ubisoft. 
So because of that partnership, they're able to license a few games and give them to Steam. And I think that's a pretty good, good thing. The next thing, the next market is the e-commerce market. And here we're talking about Shopee. And here, this is pretty much like uh, the easiest way to talk about it would probably be like an Amazon of, of Southeast Asia. So the third one is C-Money, and this is the fintech service. Uh, again, another market I am very bullish on. So this one's just 343 for me. If you guys want to know more about C-Money, it's more like a, a PayPal type square where do, they do like point of sales, they do e-wallets. So, so very similar to those companies. All right, so now that we understand C, let's take a look at where their revenue comes from. I just really want to show you guys where their revenue is coming from because the, the news that we're about to see that have happened after their earnings are, are ones that relate to this type of revenue. So on their most recent earnings, they were their revenue growth was 94% year to year, making $1.3 billion um, in the most recent quarter. So that is insane right off the bat. Out of that $1.3 billion, most of it came from digital revenue. This is $716 million, and that was up 62% compared to the same time last year. E-commerce grew 189%, and that's $510 million compared to, um, compared to that $1.3 billion. So you can see a huge portion comes from digital, but a, a, a still a nice amount comes from e-commerce. And that e-commerce grew almost 200% compared to the same time last year. All right, so now that we see, see and how they're such a huge grower and what markets they're in, let's take a look at some of the recent news that they're doing. And I like to do this because I'm a long-term investor of C, so I want to understand how the company is evolving all the time. One of the main reasons I'm not to, I don't follow analysts as much as probably some other people is me as a long-term investor, I, those price targets don't really mean much to me. I do believe this company is one that can reach multiple hires than, than where it's at right now. So on October 1st of 2020, about a week ago, Shopee and Visa signed a five-year strategic partnership. This is insane, right? When, when two companies like this join together and what is this partnership and how is it gonna help out C, right? So this, this partnership will incentivize MSMEs and for those that don't know, that's micro, small, medium enterprises. So it's just pretty much another way to say any big company outside of a large cap company. So it's gonna incentivize companies to digitalize their business on Shopee and adopt digital payments through Visa. So Visa is such a big name right now. So I do believe this was, just, was a smart move by Shopee because, hey, it says, hey, if you want to use, you can now use your Visa payments to come to our, our e-commerce and pay through there. So it's going to grab more people there. It's also going to provide these companies that decide to, to digitalize their business with marketing and campaign supports to drive awareness, traffic, and sales to online stores. Now this is going to make this is going to allow these companies to join Shopee because they're going to help them grow their overall traffic. Another thing is they're going to create unique experiences for Shopee users through Visa exclusive sponsorship platforms. And this is actually pretty cool as well. You know, most of you guys with credit cards, if you get, you sometimes get uh, every quarter, you get a, uh, a email that says, Hey, on today's, on this quarter, if you use, if you pay your, if you, piece of card to pay for blah 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 you're gonna get x percentage back and this is gonna again push people to buy that so that's what visa is doing they are trying to do other stuff over the next few months Shopee and visa will also launch co-branded credit cards like for example amazon credit card that you have right now the second news we're going to take a look at is happening september 28th of 2020 and Shopee is and i'm pretty sure i'm saying this right hopefully i'm not i, I don't know is it shop page I'm, I'm just going with Shopee still um, so if you guys hate me right now, just let me know in the comments because even the hate helps me helps the channel out so much. But they're launching a premium a premium brand part of their of their website where you have more of the of the uh, upscale of the super expensive luxury brands to say. The next one I'm going to talk about is happened August 14, 2020. So this was I think right after their earnings. Arena, which was their entertainment business, this announced the Free Fire Continental Series. And this is pretty cool. Like I mentioned, Free Fire is the game that is leading like crazy right now for C. So what did they decide to do? They're deciding to take this huge momentum that they're having with this game and creating full virtual series, three regional tournaments held simultaneously across Americas, 
Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. So again, this overall, since they're getting this huge awareness from this game, they're taking advantage of it. They're going, esports right now is one of my favorite segments. So I knew I I see a huge growth here, and they're taking this awareness to continue to grow the awareness of Free Fire. We can see right now, November 28th, they're going to be in the America series, which is going to be in Brazil and Latin, which I, be I believe is Latin America and Mexico. Next, we're going to have on November 29th, the Asia series, which will be in Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, Chinese, Taipei, Indiana. Then they're also going to be in the Europe, Middle East and Africa series, where they're going to be in Russia, um, Europe, Middle East and Africa. So uh, North Africa, I believe that NA stands for. So we can see, again, it's building this huge growth for this game. And let me show you guys how well this game is doing. So I went and looked. There's this cool website that tells you, uh, that tells you what are some of the top downloaded games. Right now, we can see Google Play downloads, and this is for quarter three of 2020. So quarter three would be sometime where we're at right now. So Google Play's download right now has Garena at Free Fire as number three top downloaded game for this quarter in Google Play. Unfortunately, App Store downloads does not have it, but we know there's a bit of trouble happening with Apple Store downloads. Overall downloads right now, we can see Garena Free Fire is number five. The one killing it right now for all our gamers right now and all those looking to invest in great companies is Among Us. I already try to look for you guys to see if Among Us is a publicly traded or where, what type, who makes them. Right now, it's an independent uh, indie game production, so they're not publicly traded. Um, so hopefully, I saved you guys some time there. But there are some also some cool news that I got from this article. According to Sensor Tower, installs of mobile games grew nearly 28% year on year last quarter. So this is huge telling me that I'm going in the right direction with my investments by believing that mobile games is the future for the gaming platforms right now. The majority of installs came from Google Play stores. Again, that's pretty impressive, which grew 36.8% compared to the same time last year. This is one that I thought was pretty interesting. Let me zoom in for you guys. The App Store saw game installs the slightly year on year decreasing 4.2 percent that to me was actually kind of crazy um I, I did not expect that to see so sometimes news like this can help us think outside the box we're seeing a decrease in app stores declines for games why is that the reason what's happening is this going to end up making some form of trifle effect to apple right now again I'm not an Apple owner, so I'm not going to talk about that right now. But something good to take a note at. Why is Google Play Store gaining majority installs growth by 36.8% on games? And App Store saw a decline on game installs? Hey, hey, who am I to say anything? This third one, this is from July 17th of 2020, this news article. Um, and this one's pretty cool. Shopee and Google launch uh, Google Ads with Shopee. So now, I don't know if you guys know, Google Ads are pretty much everywhere. So now they're working with Shopee to promote people in Southeast Asia and Taiwan to for small businesses and online businesses to use Google to promote their sites, to promote their e-store and send them over to Shopee. Final thing, we're just going to take a quick look at some financial numbers before I give my thoughts. The first thing we're seeing is revenue growth for Shopee is, for Spot, um, for C is amazing. 28% on average for the next three years. This is a huge growth company. I actually believe these numbers are lowballing it. They are going to be a lot higher. We can see here with this graph, this revenue is just growing and it's expected to grow dramatically. One thing that is true about C is right now it is not it is not profitable. And the reason it's not profitable right now is using a lot of expenses to move that Shopee platform um, to get that growth right now. They are trying to grab as much market share as they can, which is super smart. But um, uh, unfortunately, that is making them unprofitable. I talk about this in, in my other video where I do a little more analysis on them. So make sure to check those videos out. The next thing I want to take a quick look at is their balance sheet. Cash and short-term investments for shop for C right now is $3.4 billion. They have debt of about $2.1 billion. So they have a lot more cash than they have debt, which is great news for me. So now a quick thought, uh, one, my thoughts. Why do I like shop? Um, why do I like C? 
T for me easily is hitting three markets that I believe the growth will continue to, to grow dramatically. Fintech, e-commerce, and the gaming. To me, the gaming is actually my favorite thing about Shopee. And I'm happy that it's the leading the leader right now and is still growing at very high double digits. E-commerce is also another fund that I'm liking it. And right now, sitting at $76 billion market cap, I, to me, still believe this is still a, a, a multi-bagger for me, at least a two or three multi-bagger for me in the long term of things. I'm talking about five years from now. And that's how I am as an investor. I'm a long-term investor looking for long-term results. I think C is one that's going to do amazing for me. They're making smart moves right now. We see that smart move with how they're doing the e-tournaments. We're seeing the smart moves with shop with Visa and trying to improve um, the overall brand awareness. Oh, the major risk. Now let me talk about the major risk that I see with this company. First thing right now, it's it has jumped its price dramatically year to date. Year to date, it's up almost 100%. So I do believe this is going to be a very volatile stock. And volatility is unfortunately the game we play so i do believe that's probably um, the major risk but to me i don't consider volatility a risk it's just the amount of noise but i do believe i i need to tell my viewers that yes if you believe volatility is risk and you're scared to see big prices decline c might have that risk for you other major risk right now is that it is not profitable and like we saw that um, and it's not expected to be profitable anytime, so it's maybe two to three years. But to combat that risk, they do have a very, very strong balance sheet. What are my what am I gonna do with C right now? Right now, C is a tier one stock for me, like I mentioned. This is our ones that hold some of my, my I have nine tier ones that make up almost 50% of my portfolio. With this price increase, and like I mentioned, I've been talking about C since like probably in May, maybe even before that. So around around $80, around $60. So, and then I've been talking about it in all their earnings. So C is one that I've been buying through and through. And on my Discord channel, I post every time I buy a stock and it's usually on Thursdays and Fridays. C is one that I've been continuing to add even as the dollar continues to go, uh, uh, even as the price continues to go up. Because for me, winners keep on winning. So I'm not intending to sell C anytime soon. And if I believe C at the moment is C, I might not buy this week, but I do see in the future, I'm still willing to increase my position in C. Um, at the moment, I wouldn't go in with a big, big position. But like I mentioned, it's one that I don't mind dollar cost averaging and adding more into my portfolio as the months and weeks progress over time. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Like always, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Let me know what you guys think. Take care. Have a good night and see you next time.